that's what I said. Woo! <laughs> but um, the reason why I want to share about strongholds today is because um, strongholds can incapacitate believers of Christ. Uh, we're going to uh, go over what strongholds are, what they do, and how to overcome them, and how they're, it's very important to overcome them in your life as a, as a believer. And this doesn't always, um, we'll, we'll go over it, okay? Amen. I'm going to say it simply like this. Uh, there's two type of people um, that Satan is after. Those who are unsaved, and then those who are lost. And then there's two different tactics that Satan, uh, Satan uses for those type of people. For those who are saved, I'm sorry, unsaved, he used tactics to keep them unsaved, blind, right? right? And then there's tactics for those who are saved, and those tactics are strongholds for those who are found. Okay? So for the lost, he, he has tactics, tactics to keep them lost, blinded, and those who are saved, believers of Jesus Christ, he has tactics to keep us incapacitated also in which are strongholds. Okay, we're going to go through a, uh, Pastor, you have, or Deacon, do you have the markers for the board? Because I want to just give you a little demonstration of how when, we come, when we're Christians, we come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, it's not, uh, these strongholds are there, absolutely. But they don't just disappear when we, when we become believers. Right. They don't just go any, nowhere. And Jesus knows that. He, he brings you, He accepts you as you are. And then He, and he the Holy Spirit changes you yes. to resemble Him. Thank you, Marcus. Yes. Thank you, uh, Christopher Ivy. Okay, so what you see here on the first page. All right. And I know you guys probably see before. I know you guys probably have seen, seen this graph before, um, but for the sake of the sermon, right here is, what does it say, your spirit, right? Before you come to Christ, right here it says, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, okay? So this is your soul. Uncircumcision of your flesh, dead in your sins, dark and without Christ, void without Christ. When you are born, Sakura, she was my daughter, one years old. The day she was born, she was a sinner. Man. Period. Anybody, everybody yes. is a sinner. Yes. That's our soul without Christ. Yes. And then this is our. Okay, so this is our soul. This is our, I'm sorry, my bad. This is our spirit, and that is without Christ. This is our soul. Okay, and in our soul, that's where our emotions, our will, our decision making, right? Our emotions, how we feel, how we don't feel. Our, um, what else does it say, our mind? And our memory. This is right. This is before we become saved. We we already established memories. Memories from where we were. Memories for me. Memories when I never had my dad around. And these are all pointing to strongholds. Okay. Memories of graduating from high school. The happiness. Memories of my friend. The memories of my twin sister being there. Um, us as siblings. Good memories and bad memories. And then we have our our body. And this is our flesh. Now, the spirit influences the spirit that we have, which is dead, influences the soul that you have, which is emotions, will, mind, memory. And then your soul, what's in there, influences your body parts, or what you do with your body, how you act, how you don't act. Okay? Okay, this is number one. Now it says, have he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses and reborn again man? I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my command, my judgments. Some Bible says commandments and do them. And that's Ezekiel 36, 26. So, number two, he says, I will give you 
a new, I will put my spirit within you. So all that crap that was here, that spirit that was did not know Christ, that was void, now is filled with God's spirit. So you're, you're born again, the born again man. Okay? And this is Christ's spirit. And then I will give you a heart of flesh that will cause you to walk in my commandments. Okay, now, so here, I'm sorry, I want to go back here. Here, before we know Christ, we have, remember those things I said, the experiences, the, the memories that you have, the experiences that you have, the different things. These are representing strongholds. I'll say in my in my life I had uh, different strongholds. Some were like depression. There are some strongholds that are naked to your eye you don't know about. Okay, and because I was raised up without my father, I did not think that there was a stronghold underlining it. But today we're gonna really uh, zero in on that and find out because God says that we all we pair, my people perish because of the lack of knowledge. But right here I'm gonna put. Um, without father, okay? Raised without father, okay? And all of you guys can have your own strongholds. Now, this one, depression, I didn't realize that depression ran in my family. It runs way back, manic, depre manic depressant, um, depression, schizophrenia, but I didn't, I didn't hit, uh, run into this until recently, within the last couple, couple of years. I'm going to tell you how that strongholds it. And Jesus says that he said to Cain that, you know, uh, the devil is, 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 is kneeling or crouched at, kneeling at the door, waiting, just waiting, and it waits for the opportune time. And with those generational curses, I want to tell you the reason why they call it a generational curse, if you're, you haven't been raised up with your example, okay, I'll say schizophrenia or depression, heavy depression, okay, um, in your family, and you see the depression. You see how it, how it, um, how it manifests in your in your own intermediate family. How the drinking, how it goes to you. You become more susceptible to it. Like, oh, this is natural. This is normal. By the time you come 30, 31, oh, you know, I'm, I'm down. I'm, I'm, it's not unnormal for me to act crazy out of the norm because I've already learned that. That you know, and it just and Satan says, now let me tell you. Say when, when Jesus was in the uh, wilderness and the word of God, when Jesus Christ, um, he had gave, given the word of God to Satan and he had, uh, he, and Satan had turned around, he had left. But Satan left and the Bible says that he uh, left for an opportune, a more opportune time. Satan is very strategic in what he does, yeah, but yeah. God is more. God is greater. He's yeah. very strategic in how yeah. he handles you as well. Yeah. But let me tell you, it's an opportune time. Depression probably didn't give me 20, 25 years, but when it was an opportune time, and yeah. so, as strongholds get you at crisis, right. sometimes uh, you're not, you don't know ignorance. Right. Okay, there's a lot of. Um, in which strongholds uh, come and take take come into your life. So when you're born again, the strongholds are still there. So don't fret. Don't you know? Because one of the things I did was I was I was so sad and I and I had so many hopes and dreams and and then I I, I thought everything was okay. Some of the things I didn't even recognize that I had. But when I came to Christ, I didn't think that I would have be dealing with sin. You would think we deal with some sin, but not that kind of sin, right? right? right. But it was still there because the Holy Spirit said, I will place my spirit in you to cause you to move in my way. Okay? He's going to cause me. He's going to change my, my spirit, the way that I think, the emotions, my will, my huh? memories. He's going to get some new memories established. What else? And my mind by the renewing of your mind. All right. Okay. The last.